Hello, today we're going to be talking about the work energy theorem. Uh, this is in connection with Physics 20 Lesson 3.6.3. .3. So, curriculum objectives that we will be addressing. <clears throat> Students will explain that work is a transfer of energy and that the conservation of energy in an isolated system is a fundamental physical concept. More specifically, uh, students will analyze quantitatively kinematics and dynamics problems that relate to the conservation of mechanical energy in isolated systems and recall work as a measure of the mechanical energy transferred and powers as the rate of doing work. So what is work energy theorem? Basically it states that the work done by the net force is the same as the sum total of the work done uh, by the action of every force acting on the body. So you could write this in uh, equation form as um, <clears throat> net work equals delta EK, which equals delta EK final minus delta EK initial. Okay, another way to say this is that work in will always equal work out. Okay. Um, now you can see that the some of the equations on the right hand side here when we say that w net equals f net times d uh, and you can make work net equal to delta ek <clears throat> which means you can also say that uh, f net times d equals one half mvf squared so the final velocity squared minus um, one half vo squared or one half the initial velocity squared uh, now, since the work done is equal to the force multiplied by the displacement, the work done can be found uh, via a force versus position graph by finding the area under the graph. Okay, so work equals F delta D. So, one half uh, base times height for triangles and base times height for rectangles. Okay, so if we take a look at this uh, force versus position graph, we can find um, you know, the area under the graph. Now, notice that the area above the x-axis is positive and the area under the x-axis is negative. Okay. Um, and we will add these uh, quantities up. And when we do that, we find the network done is 30 joules. <clears throat> Now, in physics, it's important to know the difference between a conservative and non-conservative force. We talked a little bit about this in our last, but we're going to kind of revisit um, the concept. The work of a conservative force, or the work a conservative force does on an object, is path independent. Okay, so the actual path taken by the object makes no difference. Uh, so 50 meters up in the air has the same gravitational potential energy, whether you get there by um, taking the steps or by hopping on a Ferris wheel. Okay. <clears throat> Non-conservative forces, forces like the force of friction, dissipate kinetic energy as heat. When friction is involved, the path you take matters. Uh, the longer path will dissipate, dissipate more kinetic energy than short one. And for that reason, friction is a non-conservative force. Uh, now, work potential energy theorem, work can also be converted to potential energy, so you can say work equals EP <clears throat> if no friction is present. So if friction is present, you could write work equals EP plus EK plus work done to overcome friction. Uh, here's a sample problem. Uh, 520 newtons of force was used to drive I nail five centimeters into the board. What is the work done on the nail? Okay, so uh, we have a force. So work equals force times displacement. So we take the force, we multiply it by displacement, and we get 26 joules of work was done uh, on the nail. Uh, another example problem, a little bit more complicated. An elevator cab math of 500 mass of 500 kilograms is descending with the speed of 4 meters per second when its uh, supporting cable begins to slip, allowing it to fall <clears throat> with a constant acceleration of, of uh, 
one fifth G. So the question is, <clears throat> during the fall, through the distance of 12 meters, what is the work done by the gravitational force? And what is the work done by tension on the cable? Okay, so work equals force time displacement. Um, in this case, force equals MA. So we can say that W equals MAD. And we can uh, put in here for A, one-fifth of G. So we just go one-fifth times uh, 9.81 meters per second squared. And then multiply by our displacement of 12 meters and our mass of 500 kilograms. And we'll get 11,772 joules. Uh, same process when we want to find the tension work done by the tension in the cable. But this time, if <clears throat> the um, work done due to gravity is one-fifth, the remaining four-fifths is what is done by the cable. So we'll take the mass, 500, multiply by four-fifths times 9.81 times the displacement, 12, and we'll get 47,088 joules. Now, both of these we would actually round to uh, two significant digits. So the first answer would be 1.2 times 10 to the, what is that, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, joules. And the other one would be 4.7 times 10 to the 4 joules. And that concludes our tutorial.